A Conservative government in 2019 will put an end to the sleazy and self-serving politics of the Trudeau Liberals and give Canadians a government they can be proud of once again. You can tell that this is a party that is excited to get to work undoing the terrible damage from the last 15 years. The last... So I wonder you got all this enthusiasm because you know that after 15 years of the big spending, debt-ridden, tax-hiking, job-killing, scandal-played, McGuinty win Liberals, change has finally come to the province of Ontario. And it's the people in this room here this morning who made that happen. Each and every one of you, principled, united, working together. And it's the people present here this morning who have made this possible. Each of you, united and working together. You know, it's not always easy to be a Conservative in Ontario. Because Ontario Conservatives always seem to be on the front lines, fighting back against the endless barrage of elites and big government believers who think that government is the solution to every problem we face. But we know that that's not true. The solution to the challenges facing society are right here in this room. The solution is the people of this province. And Ontario finally has a government that knows it. From the fresh crop of young and dynamic MPPs, too numerous to name, to the seasoned and dedicated veterans of the front branch, like my friend Lisa McLeod. This is truly a government for the people. And that great team of grassroots volunteers and new MPPs and seasoned veterans is led by the Premier of Ontario, my friend Doug Ford. <laughs> what a great speech he gave last night and what great leadership he's providing to the people of Ontario. Premier Ford and the, uh, the entire team have given a hope and a voice to so many who are left behind and ignored by the McGuinty win Liberals. And he has sent a loud and clear message that the party on the taxpayer's dime is over, that common sense and fiscal responsibility are back, and that Ontario is once again open for business. And ladies and gentlemen, that fight for Ontario has been won, and it was a hard-earned victory, thanks to everyone in this room today. But the fight for Canada has only just begun. So I want to talk to you a little bit about that today, about how high the stakes are, and about how we're going to win in October of 2019, just the same way you won in June 7th of this past year. Mesdames et Messieurs, la lutte pour l'Ontario est gagnée. Une victoire durement gagnée grâce à toutes les personnes présentes ici aujourd'hui. Mais la lutte pour le Canada ne fait que commencer. Je veux vous parler de cette lutte aujourd'hui, de l'importance des enjeux et de la façon dont nous allons gagner comme vous l'avez fait le 7 juin. You know, you know, three years ago, Canadians put their faith and their trust in Justin Trudeau. And do you remember what the pundits were saying at the time? Uh, tous les experts et tous les prognosticateurs politiques prédisant que notre parti, les conservateurs, passerait au moins huit années, voire douze, à l'opposition, qu'il était impossible de gagner contre Justin Trudeau aux prochaines élections. All the experts, all the political pundits and media analysts, they were all predicting that the conservatives would spend at least eight years, maybe 12 in opposition, and that there was no way we could win against him in the next election. And we kind of heard the same thing here in Ontario about the Ontario PCs. And funny how that worked out. <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you this. 
We are beating Justin Trudeau, and we are going to defeat Trudeau one year from now. Winning. We're winning everywhere. We're, we're beating him on the issues, whether it's on his massive deficits, on taxes, on his failures on trade, on jobs, on security at our borders, on safety, pretty much everything else. We're winning. We've got Justin Trudeau on the run every single day in the House of Commons. I'm pretty sure that 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 the House of Commons during question period has become Justin Trudeau's least favourite place in all of Canada. <laughs> Thanks to the generosity of you and our donors and our volunteers, we are beating him on fundraising too. We outraised the Liberals two to one because of the grassroots support. Nous le battons partout. Nous le battons sur les enjeux qui se soient les déficits, les impôts, le commerce, l'emploi, la sécurité, notre frontière et à peu près tout le reste. Nous ne lâchons pas Justin Trudeau jour après jour à la Chambre des communes. C'est devenu l'endroit qu'il aime le moins au pays. Et grâce à votre générosité et à votre doux travail, nous gagnons aussi avec les appels de fonds. I want to thank each and every one of you. each and every one of you. Because we take strong stances on the issues that matter to Canadians, people are supporting our party. They're writing those checks. They don't have the same types of, we, they know that we don't have the same types of, of uh, third party support and, and big activist groups with their well-funded campaigns to help them. We rely on the hard work and dedication and personal generosity of each and every one of our donors. And that is a testament to your generosity and to your love of country. And we're beating them at the ballot box. The Conservatives just won a by-election in June in Quebec in a riding that they hadn't won in 20 years. Less than one year from now, Canadians will head to the polls and they will have their say on Justin Trudeau and his Liberal government. Et ils auront l'occasion de juger son héritage d'échec d'échecs à aider la classe moyenne, d'échecs à diriger un gouvernement propre et éthique, d'échecs à créer le genre de croissance et de prospérité dont tous les Canadiens peuvent bénéficier. Et les Canadiens vont réfléchir aux graves conséquences de tous ces échecs. Canadians will have an opportunity to pass judgment on the legacy of failure, on failing to help the middle class, on failing to run a clean and ethical government, on failing to create the kind of growth and prosperity that all Canadians can benefit from. And Canadians will be thinking about the serious consequences of all those failures. I'd love to run through all of them with you and kind of piece by piece go through that entire list. But I understand that I've only got the stage for another 10 minutes and you've only got the hall till tomorrow. So I'll have to, I'll have to convince it just uh, to a few. But let's start with the Liberal kryptonite, the thing that always brings Liberal governments down. Ethics. It's always been their weak spot. I've heard so many Liberal cabinet ministers say in the House of Commons, Mr. Speaker, my office is fully cooperating with the Ethics Commissioner. I'm happy to comply with whatever her decision is. <laughs> it might as well be their new talking point. It might as well be their election slogan. Trudeau's Liberals under investigation since 2015. A Conservative government in 2019 will put an end to the sleazy and self-serving politics of the Trudeau Liberals and give Canadians a government they can be proud of once again. <laughs> now, Justin Trudeau, when he became Prime Minister, inherited a great fortune. I'm not talking about the trust fund. I'm talking about the balanced, <laughs> the balanced budget the ballot budget that Conservatives worked so hard to leave him. And what did he do with that? He inherited a surplus budget 
and a global economy that was booming, and a global economy that was lifting Canada's by buying our goods and services. He inherited that great situation. What has he done with it? He squandered it. The surpluses that he was left with have been turned into massive deficits, borrowing billions from future generations with nothing to show for in return. He has increased Canada's debt faster than any peacetime prime minister in Canadian history. Nobody here would leave an unpaid credit card bill to their children, but that's exactly what Trudeau is doing. It is nothing sort of intergenerational theft, and it is wrong. And the question I often get is, what have we gotten out of it? He's spending money faster than any of his predecessors, but what do we have to show for it? Never has a government spent so much to achieve so little, ladies and gentlemen. But I don't think we can expect that to change. You know, Justin Trudeau has never had to worry about money, so it's no wonder that he doesn't worry about yours. Conservatives will stop the raid on future generations, eliminate Justin Trudeau's deficits, and get Canada's fiscal house back in order, because that, ladies and gentlemen, is responsible government that is fair to taxpayers. <laughs> and bringing back fiscal sanity to the government in Ottawa will start with job number one for the next government the next Conservative government of this country. And it starts with getting rid of Justin Trudeau's carbon tax. Canadians aren't being fooled by the Liberal spin on this. They know it's not an environmental plan. It's a revenue plan. It's simply, more, it's simply a way to get more money out of your pockets and into Justin Trudeau's hands. And don't let anyone call this a price. We know, Conservatives know, that a price is something you agree to pay based on supply and demand, the cost of production, and you have a choice about whether or not you pay it. That's a price. When the government sets the cost, forces you to pay it, and collects the revenue, that is a tax. It's a tax no matter what they try to call it, and Conservatives will scrap it. But the Liberals are trying to bob and weave on this. They know they're in trouble. They know Canadians aren't buying it. They say that they're trying to put a price on pollution, which we know isn't true. Because when we look at who will actually pay the price under the Liberal plan, Canada's largest emitters get a special deal, a break on their emissions. They've, the Liberals have admitted that their carbon tax is so bad, it's so destructive to jobs and growth that they have to give these, these big companies a special deal so they don't pack up and leave the country. But that means that uh, a big cement plant or steel manufacturer uh, will only have to pay this tax, will get an exemption of up to 90% on those emissions. 90% of their emissions are going to be absolutely free. That's a pretty good deal. But what about you? What about all those people who have to drive to work, who have to commute, to take their kids to activities? What about the small and medium-sized businesses who have to make payroll with higher regulatory costs? They don't get a special break. There's no special breaks for them in Trudeau's carbon scheme. Of course there isn't. To Justin Trudeau, you are the enemy. The commuter, the office worker, the hockey mom, the retired senior, those are the people that are getting dinged by this carbon tax. That's why it's unfair. Everyday Canadians should not be forced to pay more for everything. Trudeau somehow thinks that this is going to lower emissions and leave you with more money in your pocket. My friends, you'd have to be a Liberal to think that taking money out of one pocket, shuffling around in Ottawa, giving some of it back, giving big breaks to big emitters is somehow going to be good for the environment or good for taxpayers. Conservatives see right through that. Canadians see right through that. They're not buying what Trudeau's trying to sell.
So those are the things that are at stake. Big deficits creating a burden for future generations of Canadians, a scandal-plagued government, and new taxes driving up the cost of everything. And that's why my task is so big. And I want to close today with an ask to each and every one of you, because the people in this room tonight have already delivered change. You rescued Ontario from four more years of Kathleen Wynne and the Liberals. That job is thankfully done. But now it's on to the next one. Je veux terminer en vous demandant quelque chose, parce que les gens dans cette salle ont déjà apporté un changement. Vous avez sauvé l'Ontario de quatre autres années de Kathleen Wynne et des Libéraux. Ce travail est fait, mais il faut continuer. We need your help, ladies and gentlemen. Look what happened to this province when the Liberals were in power. And think about this, the very same Queen's Park Liberals who left Premier Ford and his team with the mess that they've inherited have moved on to Ottawa and are trying to do the same thing to Canada that they did to Ontario. We can't let that happen, ladies and gentlemen. So we need your help. Enjoy the victory this weekend, and then get ready for the next fight coming. Nous avons besoin de chaque dollar que vous pouvez offrir, de chaque heure que vous avez, de chaque goutte de sueur que vous pouvez donner. Il va falloir tout ça et probablement plus. Si vous le faites, mesdames et messieurs, je vous promets que le Canada aura le gouvernement dont nous avons besoin. We need every dollar you can spare, every hour of extra time you have, every drop of sweat that you can give. It's going to take all of that and probably then some. If you do, ladies and gentlemen, then I will promise you this. Canada will get the government that we deserve. Canada will get the government that we need. A government that knows it's already hard enough to get ahead in life without the government making it harder. A government that views its citizens as drivers of prosperity, not sources of revenue. A government that understands that balancing the budget is the best way to preserve the programs and services that Canadians rely on the most. A government that knows that public service is about self-sacrifice, not self-enrichment. A government less focused about getting attention and more focused about getting results. So that we can build a country where taxes are low, government is limited, but opportunity is unlimited, where people are put first. The sense of optimism in the province of Ontario, thanks to Premier Ford's leadership, is exhilarating. It's fun to watch as taxes get cut, as this province moves back towards balanced budget, and people have more confidence in the possibilities of the future. And I can promise you that all of us working together across this country, conservatives of all stripes, both provincial and federal liberals, all of us working together can make sure that we do to Justin Trudeau and the Liberals the same thing that Premier Ford did to Kathleen Wynne and the Liberals here. Because this was, I see some faces in the room that were with us in Ottawa and the previous government. There's nothing more frustrating when Conservatives were in power federally. We, we'd cut a tax and Kathleen Wynne would raise it. We'd get rid of a regulation to make life easier for people, and the Liberals here in Queen's Park would just put a new one back in place. And so we can't have that situation continue, where the province of Ontario attracts businesses and jobs and all the growth that comes with that, if there's a government in Ottawa just putting those barriers back into place. So that's my special appeal to you here today. Make sure that we continue the fight against the next group of people that are trying to make life harder for Canadians. And all of us working together, we can and we will make sure that Justin Trudeau is a one-term Prime Minister. Thanks very much, everybody. I'd like to invite my friend Doug Ford up. Thanks for having me out.